All right. So in this case, let us just have a revision of uh, our stress and strain. And as we are considering this question, we shall just add some formulas, how they can be taken, but already all the formulas, we have them. They were given a test piece with a diameter of uh, 14 millimeters. So according to our information, the diameter is given 14 millimeters divided by 1,000, that's 0, 0,014 in meters. The gauge length, of 70 millimeters divided by 1000, 0,07 in meters. Gave the following results. The load at yield point, the maximum load, which is the ultimate one. Remember maximum. You're talking of what? Ultimate load that was given. The length between the gauge points with broken ends put together, 90 millimeters which means we're talking of the final length. So there is the length that you started with, which you can refer as the original, and there is the length that you're ending with, which you can call the final length. The diameter at fracture, this is your original diameter, the one that you started with. There's another diameter. So you've got the diameter that is affected at, at the fracture. Remember, at the fracture, that is at the end point where we do not have any move. There's, there's nothing there. That is our end point. Remember, we talked about that in the presentation of the graph. So from there, they gave, determine the following, the ultimate stress. From where? The calculations, they're not going to change, guys. Stress is simply force over area. That is not going to change. Only part that has changed, it is the ultimate. So it must be taken from what? The ultimate force. And the area is supposed to be the original area. So you use the ultimate force, which is the ultimate strength, the maximum you're given at ultimate, the maximum. So that will give us ultimate stress. Okay? So this was going to be the maximum, the force, the ultimate, maximum, maximum force supposed to be used. So they just want you to get rid of that. Are you going to be able to tell which force are you going to use there? Nothing has changed over the area, original pi d squared from the original diameter. So that's pi times d, 0, 0,014 squared over 4. Remember, area of a circle, pi d squared. So that is it, guys. We've got your stress, ultimate stress. And in megapascal times 10 to the exponent of minus 6, our answer in megapascal. So that was going to be our ultimate stress which is 532.682 megapascal. Just like that, okay? So just be able to tell, guys, which, which part are you working with? That, that's why they are simply testing you there. Nothing much. You move on to the other one, the stress at the yield, meaning to say nothing has changed. Stress is force over area, but because it's at the yield, so it is supposed to be taken from what? The yield force. What is the yield load? And the area, original area. So we're given at the yield, the load at yield point is given 51 kilonewton. So that's the one that you use now. At yield, original area, guys, we calculated this pi d squared. Uh, 0, 0,014 squared over what? Over 4. So you can just calculate that aside and just convert this times 10 to the exponent of minus 6 to the megapascal as we had before. That was going to give us the yield uh, stress, which is 331,302 megapascal. So this will be megapascal. So like I said, guys, this is just a revision. Nothing uh, is going to change, yeah? Just the terms used there. The terms they are using. The terms, the terms. The percentage elongation, we said from the formulas that this can also be calculated. That is the percentage change in length. Percentage elongation. The percentage change in length, so there must be a change in length over the original length. 
are we having that? Are we seeing that change happening? Are we given? We are not given, but they gave us the final length. And we had the original length before. Remember, our original length as it was in millimeters, it was 70 millimeters. You can use, because it's just length then, so you can use the millimeters. But the change, because we are not given it direct, where are we going to have it? Remember, guys, if you are given just like temperature T1 and T2, how do you find the change in temperature T2 minus T1? Final minus initial. So the change in length is going to be taken from where? The final minus initial. So we are going to have the final length minus the initial, which is our original length, over what? The original length. So that's it. There was an adjustment to be made on that formula now because there is a final length at the end that you give and you have the original one. So the change in length, final minus original. What is the final length? In millimeters as they are, don't what? Original length in millimeters as it is. Over what? The original length in millimeters as it is. Times and both these units are the same. There's no need for you to change to the to the meters there's no need so that was going to give you that which is 28.571 percent you have got your percentage elongation it's from the length you work it from the length final minus initial change in length final minus original that's the change in length then as a percentage multiply by 100 percent then they need the percentage when it comes to the reduction in cross-sectional area, the percentage in the reduction, it was supposed to be taken from this formula. Remember, your formula is usual, guys. Uh, the percentage reduction in area, this is the formula that you're supposed to use. Percentage reduction in area is supposed to be the difference that you're going to have in terms of the areas but this time, it's original minus the final area because at the neck, the area is always, the diameter is small, minus that original area. That is what you're supposed to have. So this can be replaced, this can be replaced as the diameters, as d squared minus d squared over d squared times 100% instead when you're given the areas. Where we are talking of the original diameter in that case. And this is the diameter at what? At fracture. At the end point when we are done like, so these are the same diameter. So you can just use the units, same units as they are, guys. There's no need to just use as they are. So the original diameter is the one that you started with here. You started with this diameter, original one. It's 14 compared to the final. Remember, guys, the diameter it fractures 11, 11, 1, 11, 11,5. It's smaller than this. One. It's less than. So the bigger D becomes for the original one. So you just take the units in millimeters as they are. 14 squared minus in millimeters as it is. 11,5 squared over what? 14 squared times 100% as a percentage. So this is another formula that can be used in place of this. You can use diameters. You can use diameters instead. So that was going to give us a percentage of 32.526 percentage. Percentage reduction in area. Area is going to reduce because of at the final point at the fracture the diameter is reduced. The diameter is now small. So there's a reduction. So let's do revise as much questions as we can. Uh, try to figure out how do they ask the questions, where there are questions. We can send those questions so that we can uh, revise those questions together uh, on this platform till we meet again.